how did we get here? How did we get here? Have you ever had a moment where you've had to ask yourself that? I'm directionally challenged. There are times when I have literally had to ask myself how I got somewhere. <laughs> but really what I mean is those moments in your life when something has gone sideways, something isn't what you'd hoped it would be, something isn't what it used to be. Maybe it's a relationship that, that used to just be humming along and now it's not working and you just stop and how did we get here? Or maybe it's a job that you loved when you started it and more and more you've been dreading coming to work and you ask yourself, how did I get here? Or maybe it's a grade in a class <laughs> where you started the semester and you were organized and you were on top of everything and then you got your midterm grade and you thought, how did I get here? How did we get here? Maybe it's looking more globally. How did we get here? How did we get so divided? How did we get so hateful? How did we get here? I imagine the disciples asking that question in Jerusalem as it became clear that things were going really, really wrong. How did we get here? Three years we've traveled together, three years we've ministered together, three years we've healed, we've spread the good news, three years. It wasn't all roses, but how did we get here? How did we end up in the shadow of the cross? If we are truly and honestly going to celebrate Easter, and the risen Christ, the victorious Christ on Sunday. We also have to stop first in Holy Week, which is not easy, I know, because nothing else stops. <laughs> The world keeps going and people keep expecting things from you and there are things that you have to do and assignments to turn in and assignments to grade and everything else that has to be done. But if we are going to celebrate on Sunday and be honest about it, we have to stop in Holy Week. From the vantage point of Holy Week, we can, if we try, suddenly see the whole story compressed into these days. We can see clearly to the beginning and clearly to the end. Jesus came so that the blind may see so that the lame may walk, so that the prisoner can be set free. And if we stop in Holy Week, we might just get an inkling of how blind and how paralyzed and how imprisoned we have been 
Jesus came to bring good news. If we stop during Holy Week, we might just get some inkling of how we have stopped up our ears and refused to hear. Perhaps through those inklings, we might realize that we have been living in spiritual exile from the beginning. Standing here in Holy Week in the looming shadow of the cross, we can look back all the way to Eden and we can see it with different eyes. We can understand the story of Eden as a story of longing. And we can know once more that we were created to be in community together. We are incomplete without each other. We are created to be in relationship with each other and with God. We know again that we were created out of love for the sake of love. And our hearts may break again. When we see ourselves in that story, when we are longing to go back, when we see ourselves in that story, choosing again power over love, pride over love, turning on one another, hurting one another, just for the sake of our own pride. Sometimes we talk about how Jesus came and, and in his teachings and in what he did, in his sacrifice, he turned everything upside down. But I think that's really only a matter of perspective. I think in truth, we are the ones who have things upside down. We turn things upside down by choosing power and pride. We've been living in the upside down and not even recognizing it. Jesus turns things, turns the world right side up again. Or at least gives us glimpses of what the right side up world looks like. We look back with regret and longing. Jesus has shown us that it did not have to be that way. But we also look forward with hope because we know as we stand here in Holy Week, we know that we have been promised that God will not forsake us, that Jesus will come again in glory, that every tear will be wiped away, that the world will be created anew. And we stand here in the looming shadow of the cross, knowing that to face what happens there, we have to face ourselves. Whether we are in the crowd shouting, crucify him, or one of the 12 who betrayed him, denied him, fled, or one of the women grieving with him until the end, but powerless to stop what was happening. We have to face the truth of our own pride, our own hunger for power. We have to face the ways that we have made ourselves comfortable in the upside down. And then the cross. In the upside down, the cross makes no sense. It is foolishness, utter ridiculousness. We have to be willing to admit that. We have to be willing to look at this story we tell from every angle and admit that it is nonsensical. We tell people that this man 
this Jesus died in a horrific way after being brutally tortured and that he could have stopped it but went willingly. And for this we praise him? This is ridiculous. Who would believe such a thing? We tell people that after he died, he was buried in a tomb, and then he was resurrected. And that he was seen by many, walked around, spoke with his followers, and then he ascended into heaven. Who would believe such a thing? Foolishness. Nonsense. Ridiculous. It is a foolish tale, and here in the Upside Down, in this spiritual exile, it makes no sense at all. But if it weren't ridiculous, it wouldn't matter. If it weren't foolishness, it wouldn't mean a thing. If it weren't utter and complete nonsense, in this twisted upside down world, it wouldn't have made a difference. If Jesus were just another teacher, a guy with some radical views, maybe we would know some of what he said, but he probably would have disappeared into history if it weren't nonsense, if it weren't ridiculous, if it weren't foolishness, if it weren't all of this, we wouldn't know it was God. God's wisdom looks like foolishness to us, but God's foolishness is in fact wisdom. But it gets harder, <clears throat> because beyond the shocking and hardly believable, unbelievable physical facts of the cross lies a bigger truth that's even harder to swallow. On the cross and in the tomb, love overcame pride. Love defeated worldly power. Love was victorious over violence and even over death. And believing that is ridiculous and risky. Believing that means that the world is not as it appears and that we are called to live differently, that we are called to take that risk, to step out, to deny ourselves, to choose love, to choose the other, to cross lines that have been artificially drawn, to welcome the stranger in, in a world that tells us how dangerous that is, to listen to one another at a time when that might be the most dangerous thing of all. And when our eyes are opened, we see that Jesus has shown us the way, the way to the kingdom, the way to the right side up, the way to salvation. In the Eden we still long for, we loved God and we loved one another. And there was no doubt, there was no need for doubt. Because of this, we had all we needed the story since then has always been a story of our difficulty loving God or our difficulty loving each other or both. And yet God brings us out of exile again and again and again. God brings us out of Egypt. God brings us out of Babylon. God brings us out of exile. Jesus tells the story of the prodigal son who, once he saw the uselessness of his pride, came back home to love. 
And this is the story we are called to join. So, as we stand today in the shadow of the cross, we ask, how did we get here? The madness of this world, the choices we make. I want it to be like a TV drama where, you know, somebody will say three months ago, and you know, you get to see what decision you made that got you to where you are now, or you know, 50 years ago, or 700 years ago, a few millennia ago. How did we get here? I think we got here by forgetting. I think we got here because we forgot who we are. And I think we got here because we forgot whose we are. But Holy Week calls us to remember that's why we do this year after year. Holy Week calls us to remember that we are children of God. Holy Week calls us to remember that we are created by and for love. Holy Week calls us to remember that this God who created us has reached through space, through time, through suffering and pain, through death itself, and has torn the veil to bring us home to love. As we face the truth of the cross this week, so that we can celebrate the empty tomb on Sunday, as we face the truth of ourselves. May the blind see, may the lame walk, may the captive go free. May we begin to live in a right side up world. Amen.